Hi guys, I'm Heidi Argis. I'm a microbiologist at Stanford and I also do a lot of crafting, knitting and sewing in my spare time. So recently I've been making these fabric masks that are very useful when if you want to go outside at this time and go to the market during the coronavirus. They're useful if you are happen to be sick but being don't have any symptoms. Um, it'll prevent you from making other people sick. It'll also provide some barriers against other people potentially making you sick. Um, so. so these are the masks that I've been making. I've had the most success with this pattern. It's fitted so it fits your the shape of your face really well. I've also added a wire for a nose bridge. Um, and I've chosen my fabric carefully to make sure it'll block the most of the, as many particles as possible. Um, so today I'm going to do a video demonstration of how to make this. I've had a lot of people ask questions on how I've been making them. So I'll walk you through um, choosing fabric, uh, cutting out the pattern, sewing the pattern, and then finally um, I'll show you at the end how to wear it properly and how to put it on properly and then take it off safely when you come back from your excursion. So with that, we'll get started with fabric selection. So for fabric selection, um, a lot of the fabrics that are recommended are cotton because it's um, easy to wash and clean and can be autoclaved. Um, another recommended fabric was tea towels because the weave on tea towels is a little bit thicker so it blocks more particles. I've been playing around with some of this. I'm not even sure where I got it. It's a dust rag um, and I washed it in really hot water just to make sure it could survive a washing and it did so I might try lining some with this. This is important anytime when you're experimenting with materials that you don't know it's important to wash them first and use these on masks for your friends and family where you know that they will wash them too. Um, if you're making them for healthcare workers double check. Sometimes healthcare workers need masks that can be autoclaved which means they can be heated to an even higher temperature to be sterilized and I'm not sure if some of these unorthodox materials will hold up to that. Another material I was looking at was this um, reusable cleaning pad um, and again I washed these as well. I washed all of the fabrics I was going to be using in hot water and dried them on a hot setting just to make sure that they would survive normal washing. So one thing to consider when picking fabrics is how much, how see-through and how thick the fabrics are. So to do this, I hold the fabric up to a light and you can kind of see that, especially in that like coronavirus looking guy, you can see that there's a lot of light coming directly through this fabric. Let's see if I can, I don't know if I can quite get a good picture of that. Oh, you can kind of see it there. There's a lot of like pinpoints of light coming straight through. So I would not use this fabric as a single layer. We can test it doubled up to see what it like looks like. So this is a double fabric. Um, and that is a little bit better. A lot of patterns are calling for doubled cotton, which isn't too bad. I like to go one step further. And if I was using doubled cotton, I would use it with a layer of tea towel. So let me apologize I'm having trouble holding the camera as well as demonstrating. But anyway, if you, I'll just put two of these layers together. So here's a tea towel on its own. There's still some light coming straight through. Um, and then the tea towel combined with the cotton is a little bit better. So if you mix, play around with mixing different fabrics, um, and making sure that they block a lot, a lot of light. You wouldn't want any fabric that's kind of a looser knit because it would, um, or a looser weave because 
it would allow more light through, which means it would allow more air through um, and be less effective at blocking particles. All right, I want to take a little bit of time to tell you about the pattern I'm using. It's the forum, it's the, let me remember correctly, it's the AB mask for a nurse designed by a nurse. Um, and take you and get a little bit closer with my tripod. Mayor, um, let's see. So this pattern has a center fold. So you put this on the center of your, sorry, put this on the center, the fold of your fabric has some lines designated for the chin tuck and for the nose tuck. I have found that um, my mask, my first mask was a little bit loose on me, so I made these tucks a little bit bigger and that seemed to solve the problem. There's also these notches on the edges that mark the pleats. And this mask um, pattern I found online and I'll put the website in the comments. And then um, there was a PDF that's kind of hidden in the comment section of this pattern. The original pattern was a, a drawn out pattern that the designer took a picture of and uploaded and then somebody kindly made it into a PDF printable. Um, and you can find that in the comments. Now I wanted to walk you through how to cut out the pattern. So I chose this fabric and I'm going to put this fabric in the front and I'm going to line this fabric with a tea towel fabric in the middle. So I'm going to need two of these and one of this. Have this cut now and before I take the pattern off I want to make some notches on the pattern for the chin and the nose tuck. And I'm just cutting through my fabric so you can so I know where these are later. I'm gonna do the same thing for each of these marks over on the side. And then I'll take All right, so I have my fabric pieces cut out and I'm going to line them up as best I can. And then again, I'll use just a couple of pins to hold all of the fabric pieces together. Okay, so I've sewed all the way around. Now the next step, I can take the pins out because they're being held in place by the stitches now, all of the layers of fabric. So the next step is to tuck the nose and the, the chin and the nose bridges. So if you can see, there's the lines that are the guides that I made for tucking. 
on the nose and on the chin. So I'm going to fold this in half, and since mine is the same on the front and back, it doesn't matter, but if you had a front or a back, make sure to fold it towards the back so that your seam will be on the back. And as best as possible, line up those notches. And I'm actually going to follow this imaginary line where my notch is um, down to where the seam crosses over because I don't need the to be sewing up above. Forgot there was something. I probably should have put the pleats in first. I typically do that, um, but I didn't this time. So we're going to go ahead and put the pleats in now as well. So this is the front side. You can see that right now because the seam is, all this extra stuff will be on the back. Um, so the pleats, remember, we marked with these grooves here. So find what's the top side. So this is the chin tuck and this one was the nose tuck. The nose tuck's a little bit smaller. So I'm going to find the top side. And when I make the pleats, um, let's see here's, I've been doing just simple folded over pleats. So I line up the top notch that, that I cut with the notch below it. And then Put a pin in. And just do the same thing. And these don't have to be super perfect. So now I have the pleats sewn in and the seams on the chin and the nose and it'll look something like this <laughs> when you wear it. But anyhow, um, now we have it all sewn in. I think now we need to trim the edges. And I trim fairly close to the seam, probably like an eighth of an inch away, I want to say. So now I want to show you how to make what's called bias tape, and that's basically a flat piece of fabric that's folded over on each side, and then once um, you iron those sides, you fold it in half. And this is what will end up going on the edge of the mask. So to make bias tape first, make a long strip of tape, these, or strip of fabric. These need to be at least 40 inches long for the top and bottom ones, and then the side ones 
don't have to be that long. They just have to be a few inches long enough to cover the side. So this is the part that I find the most annoying, um, is making these long strips, but basically it just takes a lot of patience, folding over and ironing. If you are, if you sew more than I do and use bias tapes a lot, you might have a tool that helps you make the bias tapes and fold it over. I'm just using my fingers. And the great thing about this is it doesn't have to be super perfect. It just has to hold long enough for you to get it to the machine and sew it. All right, now I want to show you how to put a wire into the nose. So if you, we have two tucks. The nose one's the one that's going to be the smaller of the two. The other one's the chin tuck. So if you fold it out, it makes sense because your chin juts out. So you need the protection around your chin. Your nose just juts out a little bit. So you only need less protection. All right, so I'm going to have, I had on hand, some braided wire, picture wire, and also some, it says number 24. I don't know if that means it's 24 gauge wire or not, um, but I usually, I have found that using one of each of these works pretty well. The picture wire is not quite strong enough on its own, um, but helps provide support. I've also seen people using, um, pipe cleaners or like craft wire, like pipe craft wire. So what I'm going to do now is bend each of these in just as an added protection. So hopefully they don't come out. And I want to there's a shot of twisting these together. Don't always do this, but I think it'll help provide strength. All right, so they're twisted together fairly well. You want to line it up in the middle of the nose bridge. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and try to get it as close to the top as possible. Let me put something underneath it so in case I miss it doesn't glue my counter. So I'm going to try to get it basically as close to on top of this seam as I can. And I'm just going to hot glue, try to hot glue it in place. So the wire is going to want to be difficult and not hot glue super well. I'm going to take one of these pieces, this is kind of a suede-like fabric, and I'm going to trim it down a bit. And I'm going to use this to provide more surface area so it'll hopefully glue better. Again, and use common sense, obviously be careful with the hot glue, it is hot, can burn you. Let's see. So 
I'm just going to keep inching across like this using this fabric as a tape to hold the wire in place. And this wire, it's not necessary, especially if you're, you wear glasses. Your glasses should just hold the mask down and make a pretty good seal on its own. But if you don't wear glasses, this will help help you mold your mask to your nose. All right, so that's putting the wire in. And now um, we can sew the bias tape along the edge. Now it's time to attach the bias tape. You can see I have this little piece, the little pieces of bias tape, and I also have the 40 inch long pieces. So the little pieces will go on the edge and they'll be wrapped around the side of the mask like so. And I use these clothespins to help hold in place. And this is a lot of layers of fabric, so be gentle with your machines, and hopefully they can get through it all. Mine had a little bit of trouble at the beginning, I had to help guide it along. Same thing with the other side. And now to put the long ones on, what you need to do is fold this in half to find the middle and then line the middle up with the middle in here. So I'm doing the one with the nose bridge first. It has the, the wire. I'm going to put a clothespin on each edge. And this one, you'll have to be really careful to try to sew around the wire and not through it. Anyway, my sewing machine's having issues, but you get the idea. You sew the bias tape on and sew it all the way to the end. And then once I'm at the end, I roll this twice and sew a seam going this way so these don't fray. And you do the same thing with the bottom, and it's going to be even easier on the bottom because you don't have the wire to deal with. So that's how you put the bias tape on. Alright, while I'm down here, I want to make one note about the wire. So this is the first time I've actually tried putting the wire in this way. I had this idea and I thought it would work really well to put it underneath the bias tape and then sew the bias tape on top. Um, had a little bit of an issue. There's a wire poking out here that I'm going to go back and fix. And also the bias tape wasn't quite long enough, so I 
missed it here. So for this one, I'm just going to go back and hand sew in there because I don't want to risk hitting the wire with my sewing machine needle. But one of the things that I might do in the future is I might put the bias tape on first and then put the wire on the way we did. So put the wire on with this layer of fabric over it, hot glued on the inside. Um, and I think that would solve all those problems. You'd be able to easily sew on the bias tape and also get the wire and you'd have the protective fabric layer on top of the wire between the wire and your face. Now I've shown you how to make the masks. Um, I want to show you how to properly put them on and take them off. So you can go out to the market or the post office or whatever, wherever, wear your mask properly and safely, and then come home and take it off safely. So one of the primary benefits of wearing a mask is if you happen to be sick without symptoms, you're preventing it from getting on others. So it's important to cover up your nose and mouth. You put the mask on like so. And then, so this is before you even leave the house. Put your mask on. Tie it up top. And then tie this one as well. I like to tie the chin one. If I have a ponytail, I like to tie it even above the ponytail too. It helps secure and create a good, really good seal. I have it tied now. I have a pretty good seal under my chin, along the sides, and with my nose. If you're super concerned about getting somebody being sick, like if you're taking care of a neighbor who's sick with coronavirus, I would recommend wearing safety glasses too because the coronavirus can also enter through your eyes. But say I'm all masked up. Now the important part when you go outside is to not mess with your mask. Don't fiddle with it. Don't touch it. Don't touch your eyes. If you have a nose itch, just leave it. If your nose is dripping, let it drip. Just leave it and don't touch it. So I'm gonna go outside, not touch my mask at all, and then demonstrate what would happen when I come back in. All right, I'm back. So I've presumably been out to the post office or the market and perhaps my hands Perhaps I had to touch the food on the shelves or anything with my hands. So my hands are potentially contaminated. You want to treat them like they're contaminated. So don't touch anything with your hands. With that exception, you need to get your mask off. And the way to get the mask off is just to be really careful and take the, untie the straps. You see how I, my fingers are nowhere near my nose and mouth and eyes. So take the strap, the mask off. And I am going to hang my mask here and quarantine it for a while. If your mask is not dirty, if your nose wasn't running, and your mask is still fairly clean. Um, the virus only lives on surfaces for three days. I only go to the grocery store once a week at the most. So I'm just going to leave this and not touch it for that amount of time until I need it again. And after a week, any virus that happened to be there, if there is any there, it would not be active anymore. So now if you notice I haven't touched anything with my hands except the straps to get my mask off. Now I'm going to go wash my hands One more note, this is 
kind of a PS. I realized I forgot to tell you how to wash your mask if it does happen to be dirty. So mine's not dirty. I'm just leaving it in quarantine. I'm not going to touch it for a few days. But if it were dirty, if say I have this perpetually sniffy, runny nose going on right now. So if I had gotten my runny nose all inside the mask, I would want to wash it. So to wash it, you can wash it in your sink with hot soapy water, or you can throw it in the laundry and wash it with hot soapy water. Um, that's really all you need to do. Just wash it properly with hot soapy water. Um, I haven't tested it too much with the wire and with washing, so if you guys have any issues with the wire when you're washing it, let me know. Um, it might be best to just hand wash it with hot soapy water and then hang it to let it dry. Um, it should be fine in the machine, but like I said, I haven't tested that yet, so I'll keep you posted. And with that, I'm going to go wash my hands again. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>